Yeah, perhaps I should start this video off as I usually do when I record a King Gizzard video in saying that it's not often that I get to a, to do an album review um, because of work commitments and uni commitments, but um, now that I've finished university, I can actually do these sorts of videos more often and more readily. Um, but really, let's get thinking about this album because it's the 21st album by King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, and I think so far, just from a quick look around Facebook, and read it, um, it seems that people are a little bit divided on this album because it seems to be, um, I don't know, I think some people just find it boring. I don't know whether that's just what I've read or whether it's a vocal minority kind of situation. Um, but anyway, I'm going to give my first impressions. This isn't a review because, um, again, I find it increasingly difficult to give a full sort of... Um, review on an album when it's just come out but I do still want to get my first impressions because I think it is interesting to see how uh, your opinion changes on an album over time um, and this is something that I'm gonna also be talking about in my other uh, album review today or first impression sorry and that is on Always is Blue Rev um, but yeah, so we start with Mycelium, and again, obviously this album's name is, uh, let me remind myself, Ice Death, oh my god, there's so many words in the album, it's not, hold on, Ice Death, Ice Death, Planets, Lungs, Mushrooms, and Lava, so that's something to keep in mind for this whole album, is that there seems to be um, some sort of theme based around maybe like uh, a fictional planet that they've created, um, and the you know, it has this sort of weird ecosystem of lava and mushrooms. That's what I get from this album anyway. Um, I'll talk more about that later. But basically, we start with a song called Mycelium. Uh, again, it, it's one of these, like, really sort of jovial tracks that kind of reminds me of things like uh, Fishing for Fishies, um, maybe, like, Blame It on the Weather, kind of. Um, lots of, like, wah-wah guitar and flutes again, sort of reminiscent of those kind of... Um, I guess like 2016 albums onwards um, and again I've said it kind of I think I said this during my Omnium Gatherum review that it reminds me of sort of like mumbo jerry sort of very happy vibes I saw somebody describe it as um, they would be quite happy for their mushroom overlords to take over their brain and make them walk around being happy which I mean sure whatever whatever takes your fancy but um, yeah I think the only thing that gets repetitive here is the delivery of mycelium um in that like every time they say it, it is said in the exact same way and so and i think that's that's something probably to be said about a lot of king gizzard stuff is that some of the delivery um can be a little bit repetitive in the lyrics but um i don't know i think that may be more to the style of the song than anything but Again, there's some great guitar work, as always, around 3 minutes 30, into Ambrose's vocals, which are very cheerful, as always. Um, again, some different sort of rolling fills from Cavs, who, uh, again, has been doing a lot of sort of solo work. And I think, really, he's... I might have said in a previous one that his... All his fills sort of, like, end up being quite similar with, like, the toms and stuff. Um, but I think really here it's sort of he's he's really kind of bridging out into new fills and new sounds and such. Um, again, this is something that um, I've kind of missed from albums like Butterfly Three Thousand and maybe some of the microtonal stuff is that a lot of sort of the more prominent bass parts of some of their older work is missing. Uh, but here at five minutes thirty, we have some really um, prominent bass parts again with some sort of hammering on of guitars um and it just has a really nice vibe to it and and honestly might be my favorite part of the song um again i saw a comment on reddit about the woos in iron lung um obviously i know it's kind of a king gizzard trademark to go like woo but <laughs> but it's like it does take you out of the song a little bit because it's this very well in some ways it does in some ways it doesn't because like, you know, if you're very happy and jovial and you're having a good time, say, at, like, a concert or a party or whatever, like, you're going to be, like, wooing and jeering and stuff. So it does kind of feed into the vibes of the song being sort of very positive. Um, but I think sometimes it takes you out of it because 
King Gizzard has such like a wide um, variety of styles and songs and such, and and hearing like their classic woo on it kind of takes you out of that almost suspension of disbelief that this could be another band's work. Um, which again, I don't know how to feel about that entirely, but anyway, um, I've spoken enough about that. Uh, onto Ice Five, which again has been spoken about at length uh, since its release. And I do really like the lyrical line of Ice Five, which doesn't get quite as repetitive as Mycelium, just because obviously there's like the two parts, like, um, and again, the drum, the drum beats in this song are just incredible. Like, I don't know what else to say about that particularly, but, um, I think I, I do get the sort of like Miami Vice di- detective, sorry, uh, sort of Spanishy jam feel to the song. Um, and again, this is sort of accompanied by the music video where Joey's just sort of like having a good time dancing, but it, it's also like kind of cool, like, uh, with the glasses and all that stuff i think i think the vibe of this song is very sort of consistent there's nothing i would say particularly negative about the song um and again this is also very appropriate because we have to consider that uh these songs were born from like very long jam sessions and Stu has then gone back and sort of uh put them together into full full-blown songs uh with all these like sort of best parts from the from those jams and i think it does work to an extent but i'll talk more about my thoughts on sort of the jam aspects uh soon but again we move on to magma and once again i will keep saying this about Cavs. his work here is incredible um some bass lines i haven't looked at the um track listing from these albums uh to see who has actually done each part but i would assume that the bass here is either done by Stu or joey Um, because it seems to be increasingly rare that Lucas does any sort of bass stuff in the studio, um, which I don't know how to feel about, but, you know, um, and again, I think some of the recent more synth oriented work has sort of, and even Omnium Gathering to an extent has missed those sort of like punchy bass lines and that sort of like poppy, more, I, I wouldn't say poppy, but more like, um, the more jammy nature of these songs sort of brings that out, which I, I do quite like. Um, again, um, the sort of 50 second mark where the bass kicks in, new guitars. It, honestly, I think this might be my favorite song on the album, um, especially considering the lyrics where there's things like moving fl- fluorescence, uh, melting with us, melting all of its presence, forever creeping luminescence. Like, I think there is some sort of really good lyrical tact here and and some people tend to say that it ends up being like word soup and and i think to some extent it does because and i think a lot of king gizzard work uh king gizzard's work kind of delves into these weird uh i guess sort of psychedelic sort of more story driven topics and it is sometimes a bit abstract but i think just the way that things obviously rhyme together and and make these sort of like flowing lyrical lines is really cool uh, especially in this song um again moving forward i think I, I at this point i checked the length of the album obviously knowing that all these these songs were sort of jammy tracks i was like I, I was expecting it to be long but this is an hour long album which i mean i think a lot of albums tend to fall in that sort of 40 minute mark um and so i think it is something to say at this point that i was getting not bored but i think maybe a little bit bored but there, there wasn't enough to keep me hooked at this point in the album um and i think again this this is something to be said for um the album as a whole is that if you like sort of the more jammy nature of songs like head on pill uh dripping tap um even things like the live sort of medleys like history of planet earth that kind of thing i think if you do find those things irritating in any way or that you don't want to listen to a song that um doesn't really change that much in the course of its whole run um i think this album probably won't be for you and i will say in my closing remarks and uh however long it takes me to get to that point but i will say in my closing remarks that you know, it doesn't particularly matter if you don't like this album or not, because King Gizzard moves at such a pace that it doesn't, like, if you don't find it entertaining or enough, then it doesn't matter at all, particularly. Um, which, 
I don't know again how I feel about that, but we'll um, talk about that more soon. Anyway, they they um, despite all this, they do manage to sort of break up the songs often enough that you know with breakdowns and new sections and uh, new say uh, people singing in the songs. Um, and again, like the guitar and flute around the five minute mark is one of these moments where it does help to break it up. Um, again, I've seen some people uh, allude to things like Nonagon when they talk about some of the ends of these songs where things do start to build and there's sort of those like interlocking um, sort of like more jangly guitars, I suppose, and stuff. Although there is a lot of muddy guitar on this album. Um, I think there was also some sections, I can't remember which song, but also reminded me of Altered Beast a little bit. Anyway, so we have Lava, which again um, has sort of these haunting flutes and piano work, and I'm a big fan of Supertramp, so some of the saxophone work, sort of the the very fluttering sounds of uh, saxophones in the background, sort of reminiscent of some of that stuff. Um, Again, we have sort of a, a drum beat that is very reminiscent of Searching, sort of quite mystical, um, I would say. And I think this is the one moment in the whole album that I actually hate. And I don't say that very often about King Gizzard. I know that my opinions often um, people tend not to like too much, but or negative opinions, I should say. But I think the one point in this album that really sort of brings you out of the whole experience is when it says, um, when it likens lava to peanut butter. And obviously, these are both very viscous substances to, to get scientific about it. But I think, like, an album that is sort of centered around, like, um, control and temptation and, like, these weird, this possibly weird alien planet kind of vibes from it. I think something so simple as peanut butter almost takes away from the mystic sort of vibes of the whole album, um, in a sense. And then, again, there's some sort of interesting heavy guitar and flute combos, which are um, very sort of opposing forces, in a sense. And so I, I, I do really think that is quite a good section here at the end of the song. Uh, we also have the death sla slash life section, uh, which is really haunting, uh, to be honest, on top of the saxophone. Uh, again, there's flutes, there's a tom drum section, all building up more and more layers until the conclusion. Um, I do really like this song as well. I have already saved it. I, I tend to um, think about you know, how much I like a song based on whether I save it or not. Um, but yeah, anyway, we go into Hell's Itch, which, again, it has sort of um, some sort of more jangly, indie pop, happy vibes guitar going on here. And again, maybe this is because I've been listening to a lot of Always' uh, older work, um, as I've been writing my thoughts on the album, that sort of this intro bit to the, to the album is like a little bit different for King Gizzard in the sense that... Um, you don't really hear too much of that sort of like jangly indie guitar stuff from them so much anymore. I don't really think there was too much of it in their earlier work. Um, that was more sort of surf rock, but this is this is definitely a uh, something to appreciate. I would say um, again, flute, drum, and guitar work just shines through so heavily here, and I think something to be said about Stu's ability to play the flute and also just to compose a song in general. Um, Again, it continues through themes of lava and hell and almost embracing those things in some sort of way, which again is kind of reminiscent of um, maybe some of the poly stuff, but also like infest the rat's nest and that sort of idea of uh, diving into hell almost. Um, again, there's some sort of poppy guitar going on um, with the uh, shed my skin section. Um, and I think, again, that is really reminiscent of sort of fishy stuff and also, again, some sort of like indie stuff by other bands. Um, again, I, th I think I'm also glad that there's more um, lyrics going on in this first section because it is a 13 minute song and it falls in that weird section of being uh, just slightly longer than a lot of the songs, but not long enough to be like dripping tap or head on pill where it's like you can really spread it out so i think it it is um a boon i guess that it's more tightly packed in the introduction section um again i think there's 
a section at 310, which is a very uh, similar motif um, to a lot of the stuff from House of Training Dragon. Uh, personally, a favorite film of mine. Um, and again, it just adds to that happy vibe, which is really contrasted by the lyrics about death and hell. Um, and I think that can be said about a lot of the album, where it's sort of these, like, uh, mostly positive feel guitar jams and flutes and, and bass lines and all this contrasted by these like really quite dark lyrics actually um, again I think the the lyrical section uh, after that went into the jam I got a little bit bored however it did mind, uh, remind me of some of the sections from Dripping Tap where it is kind of all build and no payoff um, which I guess is kind of the point because you want to keep building and building and building but after a whole album of that it's like I can see how some people would get a little bit tired of that um, sort of vibe I suppose uh, again some wah wah guitar kind of a staple at this point but um, again some more amazing drum fills and um, we finally get some Joey vocals here I think this is the first time he sings uh, solo on the album and again it's sort of like sort of this angelical feel to it, giving a uh, sort of nod toward that sort of um, devotion or lust for lava, I suppose. Um, I think this might be another one of those sort of Joey songs where it does show how good of a singer he actually is. I said previously uh, my thoughts on minimum brain size, things like interior people. I just think he's a really good singer. Like, I don't know what else there is to say. He should do some... I know he's got Bullant, but I feel like he should do some solo work that actually sort of embraces um, his vocal talent and, and sort of lyrical genius, I suppose, in a sense. Um, again, we have Iron Lung, which I seriously do think is the weakest song from the album because of how tonally inconsistent it feels in places. Like, there's sort of this happy section, and obviously the lyrics are about an Iron Lung, which is uh, a device that would have helped people to breathe after... Um, having sort of lung damage from diseases and such, I, and oh, what's the name of the bloody disease? Um, there is a disease that the iron lung is used for, but I won't bother looking that up because it's just too much science for a King Gizzard video. Well, not enough science, you might say, but anyway, I, I do think this is the least tonally consistent al uh, song in the album, but I don't think it's bad, but I don't know. Um, and then finally, we get to uh, Gleesey 710. I've probably butchered that. But again, I think this being the last song on the album, um, it is appropriate that it obviously goes over a lot of the same themes of the previous songs. So it incorporates mushrooms, lava, planets, um, as the name of the album again suggests. And again, I think the lyrics here also come across different to a lot of King Gizzard songs. And I don't think I've really heard... Um, sort of this like chanting choiry kind of tone in any other King Gizzard song which is quite refreshing and again it ties it nicely together so I think if you wanted to um, get sort of a feel for the album and what the themes are and what everything is about I think this song is probably the best and personally I think it is good that they left it out of the the roster of singles um, just for that fact but at the same time I think it would have been good for a single to sort of like um, I don't know, summarize the album before people dived into it, but, um, again, it's sort of this, like, chanting choir of indoctrinated people telling you to do all these things, like, feeding a volcano and killing the living, like, there's some Gizverse shenanigans going on here, I'm sure, but, again, there's also something a bit confusing, because, obviously, the, the idea of the album is, uh, to have all these themes, and one of them is planets, and Gleesey 710 isn't a planet itself because, well, it's a star and it has no planets. So I think, again, given the themes and lyrics uh, across the album about sort of like this hostile ecosystem or planet, um, I think it probably is safe to say that this is some sort of like handcrafted uh, planet, I suppose. Um, again, I think a lot of the themes here really show sort of ideas of control uh, sort of in songs like Mycelium, um, Temptation again, and uh, giving into those temptations ultimately, uh, which again is probably something that was heavily explored on Infest the Rat's Nest, where um, these, you know, pilots were obsessed with the idea of being burnt up in the sun, which um, 
I'm sure there's a lot of, like, social things to say about that, but I'm not going to comment. Um, anyway, we have the concluding remarks, and I think, again, this album is definitely good if you like the more jammy aspects of King Gizzard. Um, there are some longer songs in, in this album, and well, I say that, I mean, most of them are longer songs, um, 7 minutes up to 13 minutes in the case of Hell's Itch. And I think they're... Some of them do drag out in places, but there is enough sort of refreshing material here to keep you hooked and sort of keep you um, keep you going until the next album. I can't remember which album's next. I know we've got Changes and uh, Laminated Denim, which is supposed to be sort of like a Timeland sequel kind of thing, but with more sort of classic rock kind of vibes. That's, that's what I've heard. Um, again, I think whether you like this album or not, it doesn't really matter because... Um, well, in, in some sense, and I'll get to that, but I, I think in some sense it doesn't matter because the amount of stuff that King Gizzard put out is, um, t for lack of a better word, ridiculous in a good way because it's just like you don't have to go too long um, if you don't like an album before something else is released that you might like. And again, their, their sort of soundscape and, and ideas are so broad in places, but... In some ways, I feel as if the more they do, the the less interesting it gets in some way. Because I know Stu has commented on the fact that he doesn't want to go over um, old themes and stuff. So there wouldn't be a Poly sequel, there wouldn't be a Murder of the Universe sequel. But there's always like little tidbits in these songs, you know, lyrical lines or um, guitar work especially, that is reminiscent of older stuff. And it kind of leaves me with that taste of wanting to go back a little bit and just feel like, you know, um, you know, wanting sort of sequels to these albums, um, whether they be directly linked sort of um, lyrically or just sonically kind of thing. Um, I don't know. I would give this album a solid six and a half out of ten. I usually don't rate my albums to avoid sounding like uh, Anthony Thantano, but... I don't know. I think it's a fine album. I wouldn't probably be listening to this one um, as much as some of the other albums, um, especially sort of like the microtonal stuff and Polly and uh, Fishing for Fishies, sort of more sonically defined albums that don't seem... I don't know. I would, I would say a lot of those albums seem a lot better crafted than this one. And I think, again, that is the point that it isn't supposed to be a perfectly defined album in that sense because it is all jam tracks but in some way i think that's kind of what this album needs is more definition um again i would love to hear what you guys have to think because the sort of general consensus on facebook and uh, reddit has seemed to be a bit mixed on this one and um i don't know i was quite surprised that it just wasn't more varied in places i know there is a lot of variation especially with songs like mycelium but I don't know. Um, so yeah, that's my thoughts on this album. Um, please, again, leave any comments below and tell me what you think of this album because I'm genuinely very interested to hear what people will say about this one. Um, and yeah, I will probably see you guys again when I do my uh, first impressions of Laminated Denim and... Um, what's the other one called? Changes! Um, so yeah, we'll see what those albums have to bring. Um, they are also coming out this month. So as I say, it's not long until we get... Two more King Gizzard albums, which is a treat to be sure. But again, whether these treats are as good as uh, people hope is something up for debate. So, yeah, that is all I have for today. Uh, my name's been Will, and thank you very much for watching. Now you talk.